All right. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm ready to start. So I'm very happy to be here with you today. It's my first time in Singapore. Uh, I'm very honored to, be, uh, to have been chosen to take part uh, in this uh, first Vox Day Singapore keynote. And this keynote is going to be uh, light and fun, hopefully. Uh, and uh, I want to tell you about what I call the IT holy wars. So you know things like VI versus Emacs, tabs versus spaces, etc. Um, so a little uh, disclaimer, so I'm Guillaume Laforge. I'm uh, known for uh, leading the uh, Apache Groovy programming language project uh, that I've been involved with for the past 13 years or so. Uh, I'm also a developer advocate for a Google Cloud Platform, and I'll uh, actually speak this afternoon about uh, machine learning, so I invite you to join my talk. But uh, the little disclaimer I wanted to make was that here I'm not going to speak about Groovy or I'm not going to speak about Google Cloud uh, in this uh, keynote. I may be mentioning Groovy at some point, but <laughs> it's not going to be the, the main purpose. So the thing is, somehow in IT, uh, we are working in circles. Uh, there are trends, we go back and forth uh, in circles or perhaps like a pendulum. Uh, one example I have in mind is uh, thin clients versus fat clients, for example. We, we had this, uh, you know, thin terminal clients connecting to mainframes, then we went to client-server uh, client approaches, uh, and this past decade, uh, much more work was done on the back-end side of things with light web front-ends or mobile uh, uh, mobile apps, uh, then on to having JavaScript heavy web front ends, you know, single page apps and everything. Uh, and today for efficiency purpose, we're also trying to render uh, stuff on the back end because, you know, it can be pretty expensive on the front end to, to render everything. So it's interesting to see those circles. We're going back and forth. But my personal opinion, it's more about spirals in the sense that Rather than circling around, we're spiraling, we are learning along the way, and we're improving and refining our tools and practices. And also, uh, an, additional, an additional point I'd like to make is that uh, you're also coming to conferences like these to actually learn and improve your craft, etc. So thanks to uh, the Vox Days Singapore organizers once uh, again. Uh, but even if there's a positive trend of improvements, uh, developers are still somehow polarized. Uh, so when you're polarized, you tend to see everything as black or white, so you're taking sides, you're expressing strong opinions, and you're staying uh, firm on your you know, personal decisions, and often you're not necessarily open to uh, others' positions, opinions, etc. But I think uh, in, in, um, in, in, in uh, but the world, even in our um, uh, you know, IT universe, is more complex than that. And it's more about shades of gray. <laughs> um, but well, anyway, so let's have a look at some of these topics uh, that are actually polarizing uh, developers. So um, is it a question of vocabulary? Is it a question of languages? Is it a question of tools, of, platform, of, of platforms, or uh, of style? So let's have a look. First of all, vocabulary, OK? So uh, is there a difference between what developers uh, say and what they actually mean? So let's have a look at a few examples. Do you know the difference between a horrible hack versus a temporary workaround? A horrible hack was coded by someone else but a temporary workaround is something that you could eat yourself. <laughs> what about the difference between, you know, it's broken or, oh, mm, it has a few issues. Again, same thing. It depends on who wrote that code. If it has a few issues, that's your code. If it's totally broken, that's others' code, right? <laughs> One more example, a bug versus something that's out of scope. So what, you know, what a bug is, a bug is the absence of a feature I like, whereas, oh, so you need to fix it, obviously, whereas out of scope is the absence of a feature I don't like. Um, or clean solutions versus uh, we must rewrite it. So a clean solution, that's when something works and you understand why, uh, but you must rewrite it. Uh, when something works, but you actually don't understand it. Uh, so it's also called legacy code, right? So you have to rewrite it. 
uh, or bad structure versus complex structure. Uh, a bad structure, that's uh, someone else's code which is badly organized, but whereas complex structure, it's obviously your code. It's just, it's, it's complex, but it's, well, badly organized still. Uh, or uh, obscure versus self-documenting. Um, so the, the, the difference for me, obscure is code that, uh, for, we, without comments, and that was implemented by someone else, where, where I'll self-documented. It's because that's your code, but you just didn't write the comments, right? And funnily, the, um, the, 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 screen, the, the screenshot behind, uh, that's part of the, uh, the first uh, pull request I made uh, on an open source project, uh, like, uh, when was that? Uh, 14 years ago, my first contribution to an open source project. And I was so stressed, uh, I was gonna be you know, judged by my peers, uh, or peers that I, well, respected. Um, and I was so frightened that my code would be rejected that I spent a lot of time writing very good comments, Java docs, etc. And uh, this is, uh, I mean, I, I think there was probably more comments, there were more comments than actual lines of code. And anyway, th this code is also, it's, it's part of the, uh, the Groovy code base, but it has also been integrated elsewhere, for example, in the uh, JetBrains IntelliJ ID. Uh, ID. Uh, it's been adopted uh, in different places. So uh, I, stole, I stole some of these uh, jokes from uh, this website, so I really wanted to mention it, smartjokes.org, programmers uh, say versus what they mean. Uh, so I invite you to have a look at this uh, website, which is uh, kind of cool, and, and it's got some other uh, uh, interesting examples. All right, so perhaps it's not a question of vocabulary. Is the pol polarization because of language? So that's where I might be mentioning Groovy. <clears throat> so this polar polarization, um, in terms of languages, when I say languages, I mean programming languages, obviously. So do you prefer dynamically or statically typed languages? There are languages which are kind of hybrids. Uh, and Groovy is one, so you can uh, do dynamic typing or uh, leverage uh, static uh, compilation. So you can have both, actually. Same thing, functional style versus imperative style. Uh, again, some languages like Groovy allow uh, different styles to be adopted. So depending on what you're trying to solve, you might be using one style or, or the other. So how does also things like, you know, how your language treats memory? Um, do you use language which is garbage collected or do you use uh, language where you have to uh, manually handle memory, you know, like C or something like this? By, by the way, are we mostly Java developers here? Yeah? Java, uh, let's say uh, Python, okay, or C, C++. Yeah, it's essentially Java, okay. Um, and, and Groovy. I'm almost the only one. All right, just a few hands. Okay, another thing, uh, Linden, little Indian or, or versus big Indian? Oh, no, sorry, Indian. Uh, well, <laughs> well, it's not the best joke I get. So, you know, it could be about memory, CPU architecture, uh, how uh, the, the bytes are, uh, are uh, aligned or not. Or uh, language, so this one is not really a programming language, but for example, things like the Oxford comma on period, where do you put the, uh, the comma? Um, do you put a comma before the end or not? Uh, or things like, uh, where do you actually put the, the closing quotes? The closing quotes are uh, after the period or before, or things like when you separate uh, two sentences, sometimes you can put one or two spaces. People used to put two spaces because of uh, how typesetting worked in the past, but well. Um, Curly braces, curly and braces, okay. So do you, how do you align your curly braces? So who puts the curly brace at the end of the line? Mm -hmm. And who puts, who uh, aligns uh, curly braces? Uh, okay, less, yeah, so that's the first one seems to be more, more popular. Um, indentation, uh, if you are unhappy with curly braces, based languages, you can use languages like uh, Python, uh, where, uh, you know, it's all about uh, indentation, or uh, there's also a question about tabs and spaces, but I'll, I'll come back to, to that. Um, also, th the, uh, the problem with indentation and white space is that, uh, so y did you hear about the Apple uh, SSL uh, go to fail bug? And uh, when, when this code was refactored, 
somehow they must have duplicated the, the go to fail line, but because of the indentation, uh, since it should have been put you know, at the same uh, 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 vertical alignment as the if, instead of being uh, indented, uh, the, 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 go -to, the second go to fail was actually bypassing all the other uh, if checks uh, that were following. So that's why, uh, well, there was a bug there because you could hack in your way into that code and bypassing some of, some of the checks because of the, the changes that had been made to, to that code because of a bad indentation uh, that, that didn't get noticed. Uh, so tabs and, and spaces, uh, which is a quite classical one. Um, so do you use tabs or spaces for, for your indentation? I use four spaces. Do you use spaces? Yeah. Some are using tabs. Oh, yeah. Uh, the thing with tabs, for example, uh, the Go programming language, the uh, mandate to use, uh, to use tabs. And also there's a, a talk this afternoon uh, by my colleague Felipe Hoffa, who's going to analyze um, code, etc., and using uh, BigQuery, by the way. And uh, he, he will tell you what's uh, actually more popular tabs versus spaces. He's done some analysis of, of that. And so that's a very interesting talk. I invite you to have a look. All right, not a question of language, perhaps a question of tools. So um, what kind of tools do you use? So are you, for your build, for example, do you use Maven or Gradle? Maven? Gradle? Oh, yeah. OK. So Maven is still a. Uh, Ah, the front runner. Um, but, you know, Gradle is catching up. Or worse, someone using Ant. <laughs> Make. Be careful. Uh, in terms of ID, uh, I've been a, an IntelliJ ID user for, I don't know, like 15 years or something like that. Like that. I used a, a pretty early version of uh, IntelliJ, like when it was IntelliJ 2 or something like this. Who's using Eclipse? IntelliJ? Hmm, it's split. Hmm, interesting. Uh, in your ID, do you use dark or light background? Very important question. Uh, I actually tend to use light background more. Uh, or VI versus Emacs. I'm a VI user. So you're not allowed, not allowed to raise your hand when I'm going to ask the question. So who uses VI? <laughs> who uses VI? Yeah, Emacs? Oh, <laughs> two proud guys, okay. The, um, well, sometimes, so is it because you didn't figure out how to quit VI? <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know about Commit Strip. It's a really nice, um, really nice uh, uh, series. And just, uh, I think that was last week that they, they released that one. So you've got uh, coders who are kind of stuck somewhere and we don't really know who they, where they are, and then uh, there's uh, one of their colleagues that uh, falls in, and oh, sorry guys, uh, I, I wanted to you know, save you, help you, and he was the, the last hope for these developers to actually exit VI. <laughs> so they, they all fell into the trap uh, with VI, and they were stuck with VI, because you, know, you cannot escape VI if you don't know how to quit VI. So it's a uh, commit strip, uh, if you want to have a look. They're awesome guys. Uh, so is it a question of platforms? Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been using uh, Max, for example, for um, yeah, 10 years or something like, like this. Um, so we saw that uh, you're more Java developers. Are, are there some .NET developers? A few? Yeah, OK. Um, and uh, if you said Java earlier, do you use Spring or Java EE? Spring? Java EE. OK. Oh, Spring is quite popular here. Nice. And do you use dependency, de dependency injection? Uh, by the way, dejection in French, it's what's on the picture. Uh, <laughs> so dependency injection or <laughs> impedance dejection. Uh, do you, uh, uh, in terms of platforms for, for mobile, what do you use? So I've been, it's funny because I'm kind of a Mac person for computers, but for, uh, for uh, my phone, I, I've always been using, you know, Android phones. That's a uh, Google Pixel, by the way. So who's on Android? Apple? Okay, it's quite split, interesting. And also, uh, so there's the, um, the mobile aspect, but on the web uh, side of things, 
Uh, do you use uh, Angular or React Angular? React? Or even, you know, vanilla uh, JavaScript or something else? Yeah, okay. Uh, and there are other things as well in the JavaScript space, like the, the tools for building and your dependencies and so on. There's NPM, and now there's the new kid on the block with Yarn. Uh, also for taking care of your assets, like uh, Webpack and other tools. So it's quite quite a rich uh, ecosystem. All right, uh, last aspect, the question of style. Um, how many columns uh, for in your style guide for your code? Uh, I think the 80 columns uh, limit was actually coming from the, the old days of punch cards uh, or also later on with the also dot matrix printers. Uh, you, you could only print uh, like 80 columns. Or nowadays, uh, I guess it's you know, saner to, to use bigger, a bigger number. Uh, 120 seems to be like a, I mean, you know, we've got big screens and we're not actually printing code any, anymore. So uh, 80 columns, that's probably too, too small. Uh, in terms of things like you know variable naming, uh, how do you name your your, your classes, variables, etc.? Do you use camel case or snake case? It's, it, it often depends actually on the language you use. So if you're using Java, it's more camel case. But if you're using let's say Python or perhaps Go, I'm not sure. Uh, it's probably more snake case. So again, a question of style. But but at least be consistent, right? So if you uh, don't mix the, the case and styles at all, but just stick to one, that's uh, some advice I can give you. Uh, uh, ASCII versus Unicode, I mean, I guess it's probably only the you know Americans, British people or, um, who actually stick to ASCII because they don't care all that much about diacritical marks and things like this. Uh, but you know, in Asia with uh, uh, ideograms, etc., I mean, you, you have no choice but to use Unicode. I mean, it's, uh, uh, or, or if you want to put smileys in your code, uh, you know, you'd better use Unicode as well. And uh, also, funnily, one of the, the first contributions I made when I joined the, the Guri project uh, 13, yeah, 13 years ago uh, was to actually fix some bugs related to encodings uh, because the, the original two founders were, uh, one was British, the other one was American, and they would never test things like diacritical marks. And I was French. I've got uh, accents and things like that on my letters, so uh, I noticed that there were some some, some bugs in this uh, area. Um, or dates, date formats. So is it uh, the 4th of May? Uh, you know, May the 4th, we be with you. Or is it the 5th of April? So I, I tend to prefer, you know, using uh, ISO, ISO uh, date formats uh, because it's uh, certainly more uh, readable. And uh, there's no uh, ambiguity when you're, when you're using that, uh, let's say, internationally. Uh, d did you drink tea or coffee this morning? <laughs> I had tea. Uh, so I'm trying to get used to coffee, but uh, I'm, I'm probably more a tea person, I guess. And um, at, um, at work at Google uh, in my office in Paris, um, I've got a modular desk, so I can stand or I can sit. And we even have a, a work desk. So if I want to work for an hour uh, while working, programming, and emailing, that's, uh, well, that's pretty cool. And it's good for you know, your back, stand, stand up, etc. cetera. Uh, but yeah, the work desk, you need some concentration initially because, and what's strange, when you get out of the, uh, you get off the, the work desk, it, it, it's like you're flying somehow. That's a weird feeling. Uh, you, you get used to it. Touchpad or mouse, uh, oh well. So, um, is it the question of language style, etc.? But ultimately, who cares, right? You know what's important? Get the job done. Use the right tool for the job, and uh, agree to disagree because I mean people will have different opinions. But keep learning, and just have fun. So, um, well, enjoy the show and see you later in my talk, of course. <laughs> Thank you.